Hi, and welcome to Why Do Countries Exist, an episode on Polish political parties. So today's episode was requested by Camille and someone on my feedback and request forum. If you want me to do another country's political parties, you can either comment it down below, send me an email, or put a request in the request form in the description. I currently have requested to do Japanese parties, Turkish parties, Danish parties, Serbian parties, Greek parties, South Korean parties, Moroccan parties, Chilean parties, Ukrainian parties, German parties, and many more. I'd also like to thank Camel for helping me out with this episode. I had a conference call with him, and he helped me write the script, so I'd like to give a big thank you to him. So Poland's modern party system began to develop after the fall of communism in the 90s, Quickly, Poland found itself divided. One of the biggest divides in Poland was between Poland A and Poland B. Poland A is roughly western Poland, where the economy is more industrialized and is more urban, while Poland B is the east, which is less developed and is more agrarian. The main reason for this divide is due to the many partitions Poland has had, which has divided the country. So Poland A was historically dominated by the Germans, while Poland B was controlled by the Austrians and Russians. While Poland A and B isn't the only divide in Poland, it is a significant one, and you can see that certain parties are largely relegated to one side of Poland. Poland's main legislative body is the same, which is the lower house of the Parliament of Poland. The same is made up of 460 deputies who are elected via proportional representation. A party needs to win 5% of the total vote in order to pass the threshold, although coalitions require 8% of the vote to pass the threshold. There also are 41 electoral districts where deputies are elected. So a party winning more votes in a district means the party will send more members from that district. The number of deputies in each district will vary depending on the population, with Warsaw's first district sending 20 deputies, while Czezdokowa sends only 7 deputies. Also important to note that minority groups can ignore the 5% threshold if they get enough support from their community. The same rights, rules, and regulations will elect several important government figures, such as the judges of the Constitutional Tribunal, and can hold hearings. Poland's upper legislature is the Senate. The Senate is made up of 100 senators who are elected via first-past-the-post in 100 districts found throughout the country. Because the Senate is elected via first-past-the-post, it tends to be more dominated by the two largest parties when compared to the same. The Senate's job is to review bills passed by the same and other political offices, and can help set up a referendum when the president, the most powerful political figure in Poland, calls one. The Senate seems to have a much weaker role than the same, although it is not entirely pointless and does have some power. Poland is also a member of the EU, sending 52 members to the EU Parliament. Polish MEPs are elected from 13 different districts in Poland, with each district sending a different number of MEPs based on the population. Finally, before we begin, Poland right now is dominated by political coalitions, with the first five groups all being political coalitions. Most of these coalitions are dominated by a single party, and I'll spend most of my time just talking about the most relevant party in the coalition, but I'll also try to mention all the smaller parties within the coalition as well. So first off, we have the ruling coalition of Poland, Zjewdziana Sowa Prawicja, or United Right. The United Right is led by the Law and Justice Party, or PIS. PIS and the coalition as a whole is right-wing and conservative, embracing social conservatism and overall opposition towards increased EU power, and leftism. It has been historically dominated by the two Kaczynski brothers, Lech and Jaroslav Kaczynski, both of whom were affiliated with the anti-communist Solidarity Trade Union. Lech was president of Poland from 2005 to 2010 when he died in a plane crash, which has a lot of conspiracy theories around it. Jaroslav took control of the party after his brother's death. Since 2005, PIS has always been the first or second most voted for party, and has been in government since 2015. It overall gets the most support among Poles in Poland B, particularly those in the southeast, rural voters, older voters, but also those with young families, very devout Catholics, those with less education, and its supporters are more likely to be working class, poorer, in a union, or out of the workforce. The coalition as a total has 229 deputies, 46 senators, and sends 27 members to EU Parliament, who sit in the European Conservative and Reformist Group. While the United Right is dominated by PIS, with the vast majority of its elected officials coming from PIS, there are other parties in the United Right. There is Solidarity Poland, which is the more right-wing and devoutly Catholic faction of the coalition. Then there is the Republicans, 
which was a breakoff of another party agreement, which we will talk about later on, and is broadly conservative. And then finally, there is renewal for the Republic of Poland, and is also another breakoff of agreement, and is another conservative party. PIS is led by Jaroslaw Kaczynski, who as stated previously was one of the founders of PIS, and was formerly prime minister, and is currently a deputy. Solidarity Poland is led by Zygmiew Żoldno, the Minister of Justice, Prosecutor General, and Deputy. The Republicans is led by Adam Bielan, a former deputy and current member of EU Parliament. Finally, Renewal is led by Marcin Ocepa, a deputy who formerly led several junior ministerial positions. And also important to note, the current Prime Minister, Mateusz Marionewski, is a member of PIS, and the current President, Andrzej Duda, is a former member. So with that big introduction out of the way, let's start talking about PIS's policies. It is quite socially conservative, opposing gay couples adopting children, opposes abortion in most cases, supports the death penalty, and wants to do more to remove the legacy of communist rule in Poland, while also propping up the Catholic Church and promoting a more patriotic vision of Poland, and wants to fight political correctness. It is opposed to increase EU influence, opposing EU federalization, and opposing refugee quotas, generally supporting less immigration. It doesn't, however, outright call for Poland to leave the EU, wanting a looser political union, and is pro-NATO, and is strongly opposed to Russia. PIS notably differs from other right-wing parties in not aligning with right-wing economics, tending to argue for a strong welfare and parentalistic state. It supports progressive taxes, opposes dogmatic and quick privatization, supports universal health care, and wants to send more funds to pensioners and poor rural families. PIS's rightward stance has led to a lot of criticism from the left. There have been accusations that the party promotes homophobia, transphobia, and or racism with its social policies. Its stance on abortion has led to several major protests in Poland, some of the largest since the fall of communism. Members of the party defending anti-LGBT zones in the South has also led to condemnation. There's been major protests over PIS appointing judges in allegedly illegal ways, and dominating press in the country, and the Institute of National Remembrance, which has led people to accuse them of being corrupt and turning Poland into a illiberal democracy. Large-scale protests have also taken place recently due to PIS having a frequently combative relationship with the EU. There also have been further accusations that the party is just incompetent at running the country, suffers from infighting from its more principled and pragmatic wings, could implode when Kaczynski leaves politics, which is likely sooner rather than later due to his age, is conspiratorial in any criticisms it receives, only serves older rural Catholics and doesn't really care about the rest of the country, and you can even see right-wing parties accuse them of being socialist for their economic policies. However, despite all this looking at opinion polls, it is quite clear to see that PIS is still the most popular party in the country, although maybe not supported by the majority of the country. The main opposition to the United Right Coalition is the Coalicia Oboatelska, or the Civic Coalition. The Civic Coalition is primarily led by the Civic Platform, or PO Party. PO was founded in 2001 as a breakoff of the Solidarity Trade Union, similar to PIS. It was initially a right-wing party, in the vein of other center-right parties found throughout Europe, supporting a free market and generally leaning socially conservative. However, as time has gone on, it's becoming increasingly less and less conservative, and many today define it as liberal and centrist. The Civic Coalition altogether is a broadly centrist coalition, united in opposing PIS's rule in the country. The Civic Coalition got the most support from those in Poland A, along the Baltic Sea and in urban areas, among middle-aged voters, and with more support among both women and those who made more or were business owners slash a part of the intelligentsia. The coalition as a total has 126 deputies, 42 senators, and sends 12 members to EU Parliament, with 11 sitting in the European People's Party group and one sits in the Green slash European Free Alliance group. Like the United Right and PIS, Civic Coalition is dominated by the Civic Platform, although there are other parties. There is also Modern, which is a explicitly liberal party. There is Polish Initiative, which is a progressive party largely fighting for legal access to abortion. And then finally, there is the Greens, which is a Green Party embracing environmentalism. PO is led by Donald Tusk, the former Prime Minister and former President of the European Council. Modern is led by Adam Szłapka, a deputy. Polish Initiative is led by Barbara Nowacka, another deputy. Finally, the Greens is led by both Promewska Słowik, a city councillor from Szczecin, and Ursula Zewinska, a deputy. The coalition's main goal is to remove PIS first and foremost. PO and the coalition are broadly 
centrist on economics, liberal on social issues, and are pro-EU. It historically fought for lower taxes and a reduction in pensions, although nowadays it is not as dogmatically neoliberal, and favors raising the minimum wage. It supports same-sex civil unions, and is nowadays in favor of legal abortion, although with exceptions. It is firmly pro-EU, supporting further integration into the EU, and is friendly with NATO. It also backs more power for local councils, and supports more environmental regulations. The big problem the Coalition faces is just that they are a quite frankly uninspired group. Their only real goal is to remove PIS. And besides that, they have no firm policy. If they lean too left, they risk alienating their original right-wing support base, and their more centrist members. However, if they move to a more moderate position, they risk losing their more left-wing members to more principled groups. They ultimately have to settle with criticizing the government more for how they carry out their policies rather than what they actually do, which just leads them to look spineless. PL also have just historically been associated with the rich, powerful, and even many ex-communists, and are seen as not really representing the average poll, and especially not those struggling. Finally, while Tusk is a very powerful politician, he isn't well-loved, and PIS supporters tend to view him as a stooge of Brussels or Germany, owing to his time spent in EU Parliament. While the Coalition is still the most popular opposition party, there's a sense that if they ever came to power, it will likely implode, since its various factions ranging from the remnants of the Conservative PO to the more progressive parties in the Coalition, would break into infighting since the party would be forced into making a decision and picking a side. The next coalition is unlike the Civic Coalition, very firmly left. As a matter of fact, that coalition is simply called Levitsa, or the left. The left was formed from four left-leaning parties that range from social liberals to democratic socialists. The coalition, however, through mergers and breakoffs, now only consists of two member parties. These parties can broadly be defined as social democratic and center left. The coalition is partially seen as a continuation of the democratic left alliance that historically was quite powerful in the 90s and early 2000s by getting the support of bureaucrats, ex-communists, and unions. However, the left in Poland has shrunk to a much smaller position, still getting a decent amount of support, but not front and center like it used to be. It today gets the most support in urban areas and really broadly in the West. It also gets more support from younger voters and those who have a higher education or are still in school. It currently has 44 deputies and sends four members to EU Parliament, who sit in the Progressive Alliance of Socialists and Democrats. In 2021, the Democratic Left Alliance and another party spring merged to form the New Left Party, which is the largest party in the coalition. There is also the Left Together Party, Generally, the new left is seen as more establishment, with an older support base, while left together is seen as younger and more activist-y. New left is led by Vladimir Kazaste, a deputy, and Robert Birdron, the former mayor of Sputsk, and current member of EU Parliament. Left together doesn't have an official leader, but its spokesperson is Adrian Zandberg, a deputy. The left supports, not surprisingly, left-wing ideals. Socially, it backs a lot of progressive policies, such as wanting to legalize same-sex marriage, is pro-choice, opposes the Catholic Church's power in Poland, wants Poland to take in more refugees, wants more gender equality, wants to create a museum of women's history, and supports more environmental regulations. Economically, it backs progressive taxes, wants more social housing, supports a guaranteed minimum pension, sick pay, more investment in healthcare, and raising the minimum wage. It also supports more power to the courts to protect rule of law in Poland, supports a universal insurance system for farmers, is pro-EU and NATO but hostile towards free trade agreements, and wants to disband the Institute of National Remembrance. On the internet, there's a pretty common stereotype that every Polish person is very right-wing, anti-left-wing, and just generally opposed to many of the core principles the left is fighting for. While it is obviously an oversimplification, it is true that for many Poles, particularly among older Poles, they do have very hostile views towards the left, and just generally see any association with left-wing movements as traitorous, stupid, and or associated with the authoritarian communist regime that ruled the country before the 90s. Young Poles are less and less hostile towards left-wing ideals, but still a majority of the country is not very sympathetic towards them, and see them as entitled spoiled brats. Admittedly, there is an argument that since they are more principled and ideologically coherent than the Civic Coalition, they may one day become the next major anti-PIS force in the country, 
but it's unlikely to happen soon, and I think it would probably take some serious realignment in Polish politics for that to take place. Also, the Democratic Left Alliance largely lost most of its power due to corruption scandals, so I can imagine the new left still has some accusations of corruption floating around it. Next we go to the Koalicja Polska, or Polish Coalition. The coalition is largely based around the Polish People's Party, or PSL. The PSL was historically a very powerful party in Poland, existing since 1895, and having taken part in several Polish governments after 1989. It is seen as a party representing the interests of farmers and those in rural areas, and is broadly centrist. It however in recent years have come to embrace more and more those centrists and conservatives in eastern Poland who feel uncomfortable with PIS's rule in the country. It also historically received a lot of union support, although these days this support base has vanished. It currently has 24 deputies, 4 senators, and sends 3 members to EU Parliament, who sit in the European People's Party group. Since Polish coalition is a coalition, there are multiple parties present within it. I know, massive shock. PSL is the largest group, however, there is also the Center for Poland, which is a center-right breakoff from PO. Then there is the Union of European Democrats, a social liberal party. PSL is led by Władysław Kosima Kamej, a former Minister for Labor and Social Policy, and is currently a deputy. Center for Poland is headed by Ile Enusras, a deputy, and Kazimierz Michał Uwawzdowski, a former Minister of Culture and National Heritage and current senator. The Union of European Democrats is headed by Ibielta Bielczelska, someone with experience and background in theater production. PSL believes in working to protect farmers. This means it wants to invest more in the agricultural industry, wants to invest more in renewable energy, fight pollution, and promotes more localized development and autonomy. Socially, they are conservative opposing abortion, supports more power to the Catholic Church, and opposes same-sex marriage. It is pro-EU and pro-NATO, actually saying that Poland joining both organizations was the greatest success to happen to it in all of the 20th century, but also supports more trade deals with China and India, and cares about supporting the large Polish community in Britain. It also supports no income tax for pensioners, wants to get rid of the Senate altogether, opposes the death penalty and corruption, and supports more spending in the healthcare sector. PSL's main criticism is largely that they are power hungry. PSL has been a part of several governments after the fall of communism, ranging from social democrats to PO. This has led many to see the party as not really believing in anything, and just trying to get to be a part of the government, so it can get some ministerial appointments and maybe steal some funds on the side. This can partially explain why the party went from the second most voted for party in 1993 with 15% of the vote to where it is today, frequently seen more and more on the sideline of Polish politics. Also, because it is an agrarian party, those living in urban areas, which is an increasingly large percentage of the population, see it as not really caring about them and their interest, and have become annoyed at farmers for staging tractor protests, where Polish farmers will block traffic with their tractors. The last major coalition that won seats in the 2019 election is Confederacja Wolność i Niepolegność, that I definitely mispronounced, or Confederation Liberty and Independence. While the other coalitions have been dominated by a single party, Confederation doesn't share this trait, having no real leading party. Instead, it is made up of a collection of broadly anti-establishment, anti-EU right-wing parties. The parties present in the coalition all banded together, hoping that by uniting together they could provide a platform to get their party into power and work together despite their varying ideologies. It got the most support last election from young men, particularly those who are students, company managers, and broadly living in the southeast in Warsaw. It currently has 11 deputies. The largest group in Confederation is the National Movement, a far-right nationalist party. While they are the largest party, they don't make up a majority of Confederation's elected officials. There is the Korwin Party, which is largely based around his ex-leader, Janusz Korwin-Mika. Korwin's ideology is a sort of blend of right-wing populism and libertarianism. I'll talk about it more later, but Korwin recently had a part of the party break off, and form the Libertarians' Party, which is more strictly libertarian, as the name suggests. Finally, there is the Confederation of the Polish Crown, which is a party that argues that Poland should become a traditionalist monarchy. The national movement is led by Robert Winnicki, a deputy. The Libertarians are headed by Arthur Jambor, another deputy. Korwin is headed by Slavomir Mensen, a businessman. Finally, Confederation for the Polish Crown is headed by Gregory Brown, a deputy. 
Since Confederation doesn't have any one party leading it, and as many parties have many different ideological leanings, they don't necessarily agree on everything and aren't 100% aligned. But broadly, they are socially conservative, economically liberal, and opposed to the EU. It strongly opposes increased immigration from non-European countries into Poland, is pro-gun rights, supports the death penalty, opposes further LGBTQ rights, and sex educators from being taught in school, and is pro-life. While PIS tends to also support these positions, Confederation differs from them in being more hardline in these stances, criticizing PIS for failing to adhere to its socially conservative promises. It, and particularly Corwin and the Libertarians, support very right-wing economics, calling for the income tax to be abolished, support the privatization of the education sector, reduce gasoline prices, and reducing the funding for social insurance. It is very hostile towards the EU, NATO, and Israel, wanting Poland to leave the EU, opposing the euro, and supporting more Polish neutrality on the world stage. Since Confederation is the furthest right group in the same, it's not a massive shock to see them accused of being racist, sexist, and or homophobic. They are seen by their critics as really just embracing xenophobia, and many criticisms made towards the alt-right in the Anglosphere tend to get thrown at Confederation. Confederation also suffers from the fact that Poland currently has one of the more right-wing governments in Europe, so its criticism can feel kind of more like nitpicks, and PIS supporters see them as dividing the right-wing vote. Confederation is ideologically probably the most diverse of the major political coalitions, and this can and has led to infighting. As mentioned earlier, the Libertarians was a breakoff of Korowin, due to Korowin Mika expressing pro-Russian opinions on the war in Ukraine. This shows that division is very present, and it wouldn't shock me if this tension eventually drives parts of the coalition apart. This split in Korowin also reveals another criticism that gets thrown at them. They are often accused of being Russian stooges, and under the influence of Putin's government. For example, during the Russian invasion into Ukraine, Korwin Mika started claiming that Ukraine might actually invade Poland, and so Poland should avoid giving any support to them. If there's one thing Poles are stereotyped as disliking more than left-wing ideals, it's Russian domination. So long as they are tied with Russia, it might be very difficult for them to grow. So those are the major coalitions, but there is another party that, at least according to opinion polls, looks set to become a major player in Polish politics in the next couple of years. Polska 2050, Samol Naholnin, or Samol Naholnin Poland's 2050, or PL 2050 is a party largely based around its party leader, Samol Naholnin. Holnin was a TV personality and candidate in the 2022 presidential election. He founded the party in 2020, and it quickly saw several lawmakers defect to the party, and saw a massive rise in opinion polls. At one point in spring 2021, it was the second most popular party in Poland, but nowadays hovers slightly above the left coalition as the third most popular political grouping in Poland. PL 2050 is broadly centrist. It seems most of its supporters are those upset with political polarization in Poland, and want a more moderate government to run the country. It currently has eight deputies, one senator, and sends one member to EU Parliament, who sits in the Renew Europe group. The party is largely focused on improving Polish democracy and the environment. It favors renewable energy, wants to be carbon neutral by 2050, supports a European Green New Deal, and argues a just transition must happen with miners in the coal industry. It argues Poland should decentralize, with more autonomy at the local level, and the Senate transformed to represent the interests of local government councils. Judges having autonomy from the ruling political party, wants to abolish the Polish church fund, and is pro-EU and NATO. However, it's also important to note that the party is sort of vague on a lot of its policies, not really going into great detail how it wants to achieve its goals, and Holwina being no less for any single concrete policy, but more just asking Poles to talk with each other and respect the constitution. So now we go to the more minor parties, with only a couple of members. The first minor party we will talk about is Porozumenia, or Agreement, the party we briefly mentioned back when talking about the United Right. Agreement is a center-right liberal conservative party, and formerly worked with PIS, serving as the more moderate wing of the coalition. However, in 2021, tension began to emerge between it and the United Right Coalition, which eventually led to agreement being forced out of the coalition. After this, those in the party that were more sympathetic towards the ruling government broke off, while a rump faction has gone into opposition. The party is nowadays largely arguing for economically liberal, pro-EU, and center-right policy, and has attempted to reach out to PSL. It currently has five deputies and one senator. It is currently led by Yaroslav Gowin, the former deputy prime minister and currently a deputy. Next we go to the Polska Partia Socialistia, or the Polish Socialist Party, or PPS. 
PPS was founded back in 1895 and was historically quite important, with famous Polish leader Joseph Pilsudski once being a member of the party. However, it was forced underground in the 1930s and only really emerged after the fall of communism, although it was in a very weak state, only able to elect a couple of members into office. In 2019, it managed to elect a member to the Senate in the left coalition, but left the coalition in 2021. It historically argued for a combination of Polish nationalism and socialism, but today is firmly left-wing and democratic socialist. It has made plans to contest the next election with several other small left-wing parties, and it has received some help from defectors from the left coalition, but it seems right now to be quite small and unlikely to rise to prominence anytime soon. It currently has three deputies and two senators. It is currently headed by Wojciech Konecze, a senator. After that, we have Cookies 15. Cookies 15 was founded in 2015 by punk rock musician Powell Cookies. Cookies 15's ideology is, well, pretty erratic. But they always try to position themselves as anti establishment and supportive of direct democracy. In 2015, it allied with right wing movements like the National Movement, but in 2019, decided to ditch right wing populist for working with PSL. Considering the criticism that PSL is a power-hungry player, the alliance seems really bizarre, and it broke up quickly after the election due to disagreements on the EU. After agreement left the United Right, Cookies decided to join PIS in supporting the current government until recently in October due to disagreements in judicial reform. It seems to have lost a lot of support due to its changing of alliances as people just aren't really sure what they stand for anymore. I honestly could see Cookies joining with any of the major political coalitions in Poland, just because it would be on brand for Cookies to switch its alliances up. I might hold some influence in Polish politics after the next Polish election in 2023, but I think it's unlikely the party is going to grow at all, and will likely remain at best on the fringes. Cookies has three deputies. Paweł Cookies was formerly a local councillor from Lower Silesia, and is currently a deputy. Finally, there is the Wahlkomitee der Deutschen Minderheit, or German Minority Electoral Committee, or MN. MN is a party representing the interest of the German minority in Poland, particularly Germans centered in Opole. Germans are one of the largest minority groups in Poland, with around 100,000 Germans in the country, mostly in the south. It's similar to other minority interest parties, largely focuses on serving as a voice for their community in parliament, wanting to protect and promote their interest. MN on its website makes references to its Christian values, is friendly towards the EU, and wants more development in Opole. In Opole itself, it is a relatively powerful force, although it has been losing votes election on election. It currently has one deputy who is its party leader, Richard Gala, who is also a local councillor from Opole. So those are the parties of Poland. There are really six major players, PIS as the main conservative party and ruling party, KO as the main centrist ish opposition, the left as the firmly left-wing opposition, PSL as a sort of vague center-right-ish opposition, Confederation as a right-wing opposition, and finally PL2050 as a firmly centrist opposition. I also know that out of all the parties, I pronounce probably none of them correctly at all. Polish is a very confusing language to look at. Sorry uh, to any Polish listeners, but I, I look at a Polish word and I don't even know where to start, I'm gonna be honest. But uh, more interestingly, uh, Polish parties are unique in Europe, sort of in the sense that many parties don't really have a rough equivalent. Like, there are some similarities between, say, like, the PIS and the NVA in Belgium or Vox in Spain, but the situation PIS finds itself in is very different than those other parties. The traditional understanding one has about where European political parties should be is flipped on its head to a certain extent in Poland, which I find interesting. So yeah, thanks for listening. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Thanks again to Camel. He helped me out a lot with this episode, so shout out to him. Uh, up next, we will talk about Japanese parties. Then I will talk about the history of Cape Verde. And then I will talk about Turkish parties. When all these will come out, uh, I don't really know. Um, I was very, very busy this month. I was working like 10-hour days every day last week. So I really wasn't working on the podcast. But I think things should cool off for a while. Uh, I should be able to spend more time working on the podcast. Um, but yeah. Thanks for listening. If you want, you can email me at whydocountriesexist at gmail.com for your thoughts, comments, suggestions, or hate mail. Take care. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.